Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. All right, let's let's begin with a um, short word of silent prayer. Amen. So, Val went over fiber, and she also was showing that with fiber, you must have water with it as well, correct? Because then if you have too much fiber, um, the, the matter that is within us cannot pass through. So we need the water, and the fiber is the hard things, and the water is the smooth things. And the, the, the water is the thing that, that, that the Lord sends to us, and it's, and it's the, um, it's showing the, the, the things in which we would um, get from the Lord if we're faithful. But, but the fiber is showing those things that, that, that we must set aside. Because the fiber comes in us and puts things out of us as well. The, the, the stink and the... And the um, the, the stink and the spoil things out of us. Amen? Amen? Okay, so we'll see that as we go look at Samuel, as we go, go along, look at Samuel and Moses, and we'll, we'll look at how to, um, how to know God. So we'll start in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. And we looked at some of these verses um, in weeks past, Swin and I, I believe, touched on these some, some time ago. So verse 9 says, for we know in what? In part. And we prophesy in? Part. In part. Okay, so, so, so based upon this, this one verse, we, we know God in this way, part. And then verse 10 says, but, then, but when that which is come, excuse me, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So, so there's two ways in which we know God, correct? In part and in what? Perfection, Perfection in full. Amen. And, and now Paul asks with verse 11. When, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide of faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Charity. Okay. So we've looked back. Um, we, we placed that, that we know in part. Now, in this time period in which we're in, right now living, this is when we know God in part. Because we looked at the two servants and um, in Galatians 4. Um, and... Um, that son, that son is, as long as he is a child, he is a what? He's a servant. But he's, amen, yes. So, and Paul tells that as a child, we know in part. Correct? Correct? Correct, Kerry? Okay. All right, so as a child, we know in part. So right now... We are as children only knowing in part. We don't know God as we ought to know God. All right. And then Paul tells us that, but then that which is perfect is come. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. He adds to that in verse 12, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. So what we know as a child, we see darkly. But then when we put away these childish things and become a man, a man in Christ Jesus, how shall we know? Even as we are known. Amen. Face to face, even as we are known. And this is really pointing forward to what time? Because what time do we really see Christ face to face literally? At the second coming. And we've went over um, some, time in, some time past in the months that the sign is just typifying the second coming of Christ. Just as 9 11 typifies the second coming of Christ. That's why, just as civil Sunday law, to the second coming of Christ, and the final review, to the second coming of Christ. All those way marks are pointing forward to when Christ literally comes and we see him face to face. All right, go ahead. Um, Moses was brought through this 
Amen, yes. Moses was then showing forth Christ before the um before before the um the men as they walk through the, 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 the wilderness. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna look at Samuel. First um Samuel chapter three. We're gonna read these verses, look at Samuel and, and, and then we'll see Samuel in this very in this very same pattern. Child and then man, part part and then in full. Um, dark and then face to face. So verse one says, now the what? It says, uh, sorry, not now. And the, the child. the child. Amen. And the child, Samuel ministered on, unto the Lord before Eli and, and the word, word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open what? So how are they seeing? Darkly. Darkly. Okay. No open vision. It's the time period we're in now. Seeing darkly, no open vision as a child, seen in part. But Samuel still knew, knew God because he was serving before God. Here, this is what the verse tells us. You can't serve God and not, not know of him because he was standing as a priest at this time. Verse 2 says, and it came to pass at that time when, 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 when Eli was laid down in his place and, and his eyes, amen, that, that he could not see and, and ear, and ear the Lamb of God went out in the of the Lord, amen, where, where, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that, that, th that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, "Here am I." All right. Now, in verse five, and and he ran on to who? Okay. So now, when Samuel called, excuse me. Now, when God called called Samuel, Samuel ran ran to who? To man. All right. Let's keep that in mind. Verse um, five. Yeah. And he, ra and, and he ran out to Eli and said, here am I. For thou callest me and 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 he, excuse me. And he said, I I call not lie down again. And he went and lay down. So have these two times he called. These two times that we just read, he called, the Lord called on to Samuel, and Samuel ran on to Eli. We'll read again. Concern read verse 6, please. Okay, so this is the third time now. So three times the Lord calls, calls Samuel here, and three times Samuel runs, runs onto who? Onto man, onto Eli. Is this correct? No, you should be going to who? The Lord. All right. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord calls Samuel again the third time. Sorry. Yeah, this is the third time. Again, the third time, and he, he um, arose and, and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And, 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 and amen, what? Perceive that the Lord had called the child. So at the third time, this is where now Eli perceives that this is the voice of the Lord as actually calling um, Samuel. Let's so read verses 9 to 12 for me, please. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant, servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at 
said of the time, Samuel, Samuel. <coughs> then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, and at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Amen. So we looked at previously before years ago that the third and the fourth are, are what? Combined. So, so we see here at the third time he calls, Eli sees that this is, this is the vo voice of God. And now Eli gives, gives the child um, instructions on to, um, to, to speak, speak, unto God, um, speak unto God. So what I'm going to put forth here is that the fourth time, is now at the beginning of, of the 10. This is the fourth time where now um, the Lord calls Samuel. Now this is when Samuel responds unto God. And verse 11 is this fiber. This is the rough, th the rough word from God. Because he says, he says that both ears will what? Tingle. And now this goes back to the, um, to the, um, Seven times in, uh, I want to say in First Kings, but, but when it was speaking of the fall of I think Jehoiada Chin. But anyways, so the so Lord comes here. He calls Samuel. Say, Samuel, Samuel. And, um, and he gives them this straight testimony, this message of destruction. Second Kings 21. Second, Manasseh. Oh, Manasseh, thank you, yes. Second Kings 21, we're speaking about the heirs, heirs tingle. So it's given this message of judgment to come. So this straight testimony is this judgment message. Okay. Page of Prophets, 582, paragraph 1. Can someone read that? Read these. Read this paragraph for me, please. Amen. So in verse 12, it says, in that day. So we've looked at previously, back at the camp meeting this year, that this 10 is that day. But now the Lord is going to work, and in this day, he will make an end at that time. And he says that when Samuel did not know, before this fourth call, the Lord, um, Samuel did not know the Lord. But this means he did not have a direct um, amen of God's presence. But then when um, at the fourth time when God calls Samuel, he has a what? Direct manifestation. Amen. Direct manifestation of God's presence. Amen. Light has ever been a symbol of God's presence. Amen. Direct manifestation of God's presence. Okay. All right. Was that a hand? Yeah. Go ahead. I was just thinking, um, so we could see something of this if it's in part or in type um, back in school tradition. Something changes, we get more of God's presence. Yeah. You learn. Okay, that's exactly what we're going to look at. Because it says that he had not received these things as the prophets. So at this point, he is receiving the prophets. Um, huh? Amen. A prophet's commission at this point. Amen. This is, this is what Samuel receives as the prophets. And keep, keep that word in mind, a prophet. Because we'll see this with Moses. Because, because I, I believe she says the prophet did not cease... Um, cease 
seeking God, and this was in reference to Exodus uh, 33, when we get there. So, all this is about is knowing the Lord. We have to know, know the Lord, and we have to know Him in full, because this is what... Um, this is where now we have the seal on our foreheads when we know God in full. We do know him in part and we have to walk, walk in that in part and acknowledge that we do know him in part as well. OK, and one more point I want to take from this paragraph is that 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 um, the Lord revealed himself in this unexpected manner. If you just look up that phrase, unexpected manner, you will see many things with this unexpected manner. That phrase is a study in itself and it can take you to many routes. So. Because she directly links it to the third angel's message, the binding off message, the sealing message. Amen. So this light is going to come in an unexpected manner. So we have to put ourselves in a position even now so that when this time comes that we will not reject Christ. Because Christ is going to come in an unexpected manner. When Christ stepped down and then um, stood, stood as a man, the angel saw that as in Christ coming as an unexpected manner. Because they did not see that. God can dwell in, in finite man. So that was an unexpected man. And they themselves had to accept that. Okay. So, next paragraph. May I read it for this, please? <clears throat> Amen. So Samuel was hesitant to give this message because his message was speaking about this great calamity that is to come. This point for putting that at at the sign. Don't eat that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Amen. And that if you eat eat of that fruit, this will come about. Great calamity. So Samuel did not want to give this message, but however, he was compelled to give the message nonetheless. Because um, you can also bring Ezekiel 3 and so forth with it. We're showing that if you don't give this message, the blood is on your, hand, on, on your head. Okay. So this is now when Samuel begins to know, know the Lord. Amen. And this is in line with 2 Peter, I think, 1, 1, 19, because it is a light, and then the day dawn, then the day star. He knows in full, but this, this is the time period when he's beginning to know in full, Onward, from the beginning down, down, down to the end. Understand? Following? Okay. It's a light, day dawn, then day star. He knows in full at the end, because at the end of this chapter, um, this is now when I believe his name is spread between um, from Dan, Dan even onto Beersheba. When everybody knows that there's a, the there's a prophet in the land, Amen. And that is at, at at the end. But he he received this light from God, which the prophets received as well. So from the very beginning, he is standing in the stead of a prophet. But he must reach all the way down onto the end. So it's not finished until Christ says it is done. All right, so Exodus 31, verse 13. Speak thou, speak thou, yes, yes, please. Okay, so what lets you know? What, what lets you know of of God? The sign, which is the what? It. What you said, Kerry? Loudly. 
Go ahead. It's right. Say it loudly. Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. Amen. That is what um, lets everyone know that you know the Lord. And this and this is um, this is how you know the Lord yourself is by the Sabbath. So at this point, it's now where Samuel begins to to know know the Lord because now he has this direct light from from God. So, Amen. So the light that comes here would have to be connected with what then? The Sabbath, the seventh day. And we went over previously this year that we know that the Sunday churches will be on the rise from this point onward. So therefore, if the Sunday churches are, are, are on this rise, the Sabbath then, the true day, the true light must be on the rise as well. Because the Lord will not allow Satan to increase in strength and, and, and his people just wax and wane and die. No, not, not wax. Sorry, wane and die. Okay, continue on. Amen. So the Sabbath light, this is what helps you know the Lord. This is this is how how man can know know God it's through the Sabbath. And this is how you are refreshed at the end. When you fully know know God. CCH two six eight point two. May I read this for this quote as well? <clears throat> Amen. So this final test here must show us in type this, um, as she says here, the last great um, trouble as well. It must, it must show us this in type where, therefore, the light that, that must come here has to be connected with the Sabbath. Because, because um, yeah, of the Sabbath. Amen. Because when when men left left us back back when um yes in, in that time it was the binding off message and the binding off message is which is the sealing message it's the third age message it 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 is showing forth the sabbath so back then in that time it was the same same thing it's shown us the rules of this of, of the sabbath light go ahead Mm -hmm. the, um, test. Yes. Therefore, it's not the Sabbath, but the way the principles of it. About, yes. Uh, doing it is going to show all the principles of the Sabbath from the issue. Amen. Um, oh, I forgot, but anyways. All right. Let's go to Exodus 33 now, verse 12. Now Moses is pleading to know God as well. And... Yes, all right. May I have read it for verses, verse um, 12 to 19, please, of Exodus 33. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send me to. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by thy name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found, if I have found grace in thy sight, Show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? It is not, is it not, is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, and I thy people, I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, that I know thee by thy by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, 
I will make all my all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Amen. So now Moses prays and he prays so that he might know the Lord's way, so that he might know the Lord. And we know that Moses followed God, obviously, but he is asking to know him even more. All right, let's just continue continue on and see what Sis White says upon these points. Patriots and Prophets, 327, paragraph 3. Let's read this, please. Moses knew it was well to mercy and blindness of those who were placed under his care. He knew the difficulty with much. With which? With which he, he must contend. But he had learned that in order to prevail with the people, he must have help from God. He pleaded for a clearer revelation of God's will and for an assurance of his presence. Be thou unto me. Bring up this people that thou hast to speak. And thou hast not let me know if whom thou wilt send, send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by, by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in my sight, show me thy way that I may know thee. And I find grace in thy sight and consider and consider this nation and consider that this nation is thy people. Amen. So Moses comes here and he pleads for to know God's will. So now we see what Paul says. It says, For this is the will of God, even your what? Amen. Sanctification. And we read earlier in Exodus twenty one. Exodus 31, verse 13, that, that the Sabbath helps us to know God that doth sanctify us. Because that is what the word, um, the, the verse says. So, Moses comes and pleads, pleads to know God's will. So, so if Moses wants, wants to know God's will, the Lord must be showing him light upon the Sabbath. Show, showing him rules of the Sabbath. Because this is... This is the final test in which every man will, will, will meet. And this is um, showing forth our time when, when we are forced to force these vaccines and such before the sun law crisis itself. All right. So we have here in that quote that we just read, Sis White quotes verse 13. And verse 13 is this first prayer that, that he does. And now she goes on. And, now he quote, and then she quotes his second prayer. Page of Prophets 328, paragraph 1. May I read it for this as well, please? The answer was, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. But Moses was not yet satisfied. There pressed upon his soul a sense of terrible results should God lead Israel to hardness and impenitence. He could not endure that his interest should be separated from those of his brethren, and he prayed that favor of God might be restored to his people, and that the token of his presence might continue to direct their journey. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all that are upon the face of the earth. Amen. So we have the second prayer. And I'm place these four prayers that, that he has as well in this this ten. And we'll see as we go along at this. Where now Moses sees sees Christ in his fullness. Fully. Put the third in. Okay. Um, paragraph 2, page on the Prophets 3, 28, paragraph 2. Can I read it for this as well, please? And the Lord said, The Lord said, I will give you this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found great graces in my sight, and I know thee by name. Still the prophet did not speak freely. Every prayer had been answered, but his thirst was the greater for proof of God's favor. He now made a request that no human being all 
right. So now Moses asked to to see to see Christ. And now how he see him? Um darkly or face to face? Face to face, because the um the scriptures tell us that Moses was was one whom whom um the father spoke with face to face. Continue on, paragraph three. Continue on, Sasha. Amen. So now Moses now comes in this cleft and now and now he he sees Christ face to face now. So now he is not 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 seen in part, but he's seeing in in the full face face to face. And then um all right, continue on, paragraph four. So read this as well. Amen. So, from this point on, you have this this trust that this divine um, divine presence shall attend. When he sees um, sees Christ face to face. Lived, yes. So this full prayer is, I understand. I mean, you also come face to face at the end, I agree. Mm -hmm. But I think when he's doing, he says, right, they have done, the destruction that we're preaching of comes at the seventh plague. It comes right at the end of that time period. Mm -hmm. So it's at the dawn, I would think, you have this first face to face experience, then you go give it to the people, and then the next one, then you go give it to the Gentiles. I follow that thought because that was my f first thought as well where at the dawn because this is the time when the tide um shifts mm -hmm. so i had, had that thought as well i'll just uh, it's this you can see it as a whole experience as well because th this this is the cloud the size of a um half a man's hand and this is showing showing the divine presence with the um with the saints at that time so i have no problem with that either Okay, so now, Exodus 34, verse 6, read, read to verse 11. And now, this is what is received at the end as well. May I read it for these verses? Exodus 34, verse 6 to 11. Go ahead. forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his, his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, 
turn in our iniquity and our sin and take us um, for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people I will I will do marvels such as have, have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Amen. So now at the end, he makes a covenant with Moses. And he will do... Um do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth. And now it's, this, um, it's the same thing that, that was almost said unto Samuel, that, that he will do, where is it? He will do a thing in, in the church whereat both ears shall tingle. But one is a blessing, one is a curse. So Moses is showing this blessing that shall be received and the curse that comes upon um, the sons of, sons of Eli and upon Eli himself. Okay. All right. um, now we'll look at what Sister White says about these things. And can someone read paragraph 2 and 3 of PP 329? Can someone read this? Uh, next one, please. Three, three, three thirty, paragraph two. Amen. So Moses asked at the beginning to know his will, and, and his will is directly linked with the Sabbath. And then the thing that brightened his face at the dawn was, was seeing the law of God. This is what made, made, made his face shine. Amen. Type meets anti-type. Yes. Uh, yes. Amen. All types. Amen. Amen. So the thing that sh make, makes, makes, makes his face shine is seeing the law of God. And I'm seeing this point that, that the Lord has shown us in this time period, the law, the law, the law. This whole year, we've looked at that with the, the law being exalted because we looked at um, the higher, um, the, the higher power. Yes, which is showing the law. So this whole year, the Lord has been showing us things of, of the law. And there's a reason for it because we're going to meet this test soon. And the light that comes here in this, in um, at this time here is pertaining to the law of God. It is pertaining to 
the one law that Satan has fought from the very start, it is the Sabbath. So we have to understand these things. And, and these things will come in an unexpected manner. So we have to put ourselves um, where, where, where um, God can use us and reach us when this light comes. Because it's going to be upon the law of God. Because the law of God is what shows us ourselves and shows us as well God at the same time. Because it shows us the law the law um the law in which we should um follow because this this law is this mirror and a mirror always shows us ourselves the mirror shows 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 us if there's a spot on our shirt spot on our pants or if our hair is not right and all these things so this is what the lord is going to do right here as well he's going to show us ourselves and show us all of our defects we must turn from these from these defects as well and um adhere to what the Lord is saying at that point. So come down to a close these last two quotes. May I read it for 330, paragraph 3? The glory reflected in the countenance of Moses illustrates the blessing, blessings to be received by God's commandment-keeping people through the mediation of Christ. It testifies that the closer our communion with God and the clearer our knowledge of his requirements, the more fully shall we be conformed to the divine image, and the more readily do we become partakers of the divine nature. Amen. So, so this is how we we know God. This is the low and full. But I'm just putting it here, just showing that this is a progression, but it's not fully done until the end. Actually, actually, I'm going to move it as to not cause any confusion on this point, actually. Paul has uh, this great speaking about blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, earlier on, we, we learned that this never-ending blessing comes at the first, um, at the first resurrection. And yes. They came up and they heard the voice and they received the never-ending blessing. Amen. Amen. And, and then um, the wicked rises up at the end. The one receives the blessing. The one receives the and curse. At the end, the wicked receives the curse. Amen. Last quote, COL 315.1. May I read it for this as well, please? God requires perfection of his children. His law is a transcript of his own character and is the standard of all characters. This infinite standard is presented to all that there may be no mistake in regard to the kind people who, will, who God will have to compose his kingdom. The life of Christ on earth was a perfect expression of the law of God. And when those who claim to be the children of God become Christ-like in character, they will be obedient to God's commandments. Then the Lord can trust them to be, to be the number Glory of, the glory of, in the glory of the apparel of Christ's righteousness, they have a place at his feet. They have a right to join the blood washing God. Amen. So, when he, he comes and gives us a transcript of his character, and we are to emulate this character as far as possible. On to the end, because this is how now we are in this, this family of heaven, where now we are this son of this the, uh, the this son son of God at the end and we're just as Christ. So prayer this was plain showing the these these um the way in which the Lord will um show us himself that at first we know in part but then at the end we know in full. And Samuel is is Shows us the the time when we know in part and the time when we know in full. And Moses has shown us the time when we know in full from the beginning on to the end until until we're standing just as as Christ. Amen. All right. Let us um, kneel for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for. 
for all that you have shown the Lord. And please, Father, help us to um, seek your face more, to, to know your will for us and to, um, and to hear, hear your, your voice from on high, to um, stand firm on, 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 on all that, you, all that you have shown, so that um, when this last trial comes, Lord, that that we 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 might not fall, Father, and and we ask all these things in Christ's name. We pray, Amen.